I am. We're here. We just we're, we're over here just flying around looking at the mesquite. How they look? They look they look perfect actually. They look really good. Look like we're probably gonna have a, a good kill. I mean they got lots of leaf, hard to see through, lots of beans. I, I think we're about as good as we will, good as they've looked in three or four years. Okay, I'm gonna south that up on the west, the far west side, uh, kind of see what the wind's doing, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there, kind of work my way east. Sounds good. All right, well, welcome to the Mendota Ranch. Today we're doing something a little different. We're going to kill some mesquite. Uh, Luke Bodeker, uh, well, he's kind of a business partner of mine too, but he's got a spraying business. You see him coming in right here in, the, in his plane. And he's going to spray some mesquite. Uh, we're going to use a Sendero today, which is is made by Corteva. So Corteva, us and Corteva are maybe doing some deals together. And so uh, we want to use some of their chemical to kill some of these mesquites. I've got just a little patch of about 130 acres of mesquite that's really thick right here. Luke's fixing to pop some smoke. Figure out which way the wind. We don't have much wind at all. All right, he popped smoke. I think I need to get me a smoke popper. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's, that can't do it without them. So if we do an ever other pass while the wind's like this, that'll keep me from flying back through it. Yeah, I was, well, I was fixing to ask you about that. So you you don't want to fly back through the chemical Traffic, at all? Traffic, 11 o'clock. Not if no, I don't have to. Less than one mile. So uh, when the wind's calm like this, you can, do, you can skip a pass, do every other one, and then come back, do 10, and come back fill in the blank. Maybe the best looking trees I've sprayed this year. So when you get done here, are you, are you just spraying some more mesquite when you get done here, or what's going on? Yeah, more mesquite. Just uh, we'll probably run till till the temperature gets about 92, 91, 92, and then shut down. But yeah, I've got got a few more loads to do down back down south. Oh, I got you. So Luke, Luke is a helicopter pilot too. Um, I trained Luke. I, I taught Luke his external load stuff, but so how heavy are you right now? I was probably uh, max growth is 12.5, 12,500. So I was right at it mile. when I got here. Wow, that's that's a lot of weight. Yeah, this airplane's got big fuel tank, so uh, you can really a good long range. It's good for doing stuff, you know, far far further from home like this. I've got a light bar, I've got an uh, indicator on my light bar that basically gives me an approach to the to the poly, so I know exactly, I can look at the light bar and I know exactly when to flip the switch in and out of the poly, it's pretty handy. No way, that's way nicer than mine. It'll actually do it automatically, but I don't like how the, the it's hard to get the timing set up right automatically. Um, you know, you want to really want to be able to lead and lag the way you want to and uh, so I usually don't run it on automatic. So for our, our YouTube fans, what uh, how'd you get into uh, spraying? Well, it's kind of a long story but I'll give you the short version. I had a guy that helped me, mentored me into flying and uh, he, uh, he was an old crop duster and uh, he always encouraged me to to pursue it, and uh, I always kind of wanted to, but uh, you know, he really he really helped me meet the right people and get the right kind of experience. And then I found an old fella. Hold on. Found an old guy that's uh, family business was for sale, or he wanted to thought he wanted to sell it, so Traffic, ended up making a deal with him, and that was the start of it. And it's just kind of grown from there. I mean, other than a commercial pilot license, what does it take to be a pilot? Uh, crop duster pilot. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Well, it just depends, you know, on what kind of experience you've got. Uh, it, it, it's basically, it's all done through mentorship. You know, you, there's, you've got to, got to find somebody that can be a mentor and, you know, get you broken in, as the, as the industry calls it, break somebody in, you know, get, it's, uh, it's, it's more of an apprenticeship, but I've known of guys that have started with 500 hours, um, so that's probably a good start, you know, and half or more of that needs to be in a tailwheel airplane. Yeah, so you've got, uh, what, you got three spray planes, three firefighting rigs, and you got ground rigs too? 
Yeah, actually four spray planes, and uh, then we have three that are basically dual purpose. They fight fire most of the time, but they can spray as well. And then three ground rigs. Kind of, kind of blew up on me. I don't think I was. Uh, I don't think that was the original plan, but <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Uh, that sounds like a lot of freaking equipment. There's a, something broken every single day somewhere. So I'm flying a 602 air tractor. It's a 600 gallon airplane. We talked about the growth weight, 12, 12 five max growth. Uh, got a 1300 horsepower engine. Uh, Pratt Whitney TT6, uh, which is the gold standard in tur turbine turboprop for airplanes. It's a really great engine. Obviously, I'm uh, I'm relying on it big time right now. Yeah, you lose an engine now, you're going to be, you're not, you're not going to be in a good spot. So this engine is actually bigger, it's D-rated, so it's a, it's, I believe it's a 1,280 horsepower and it's D-rated significantly, so uh, I always have ex extra power, which is a really good, uh, it's a really good combo. It's the biggest, it's the big engine and uh, big engine for this airframe, so yeah, it does really high performance in hot, high conditions. So like how much how much jet A are you burning right now? Sixty five gallons an hour right now. So you burning with that with that engine, are you burning pretty much the same now as you would be in cruise or you does it burn more flying over here? Pretty much the same. I am burning a little less than I would in cruise. I was I was pushing pretty hard, you know, coming up here just to go faster, but yeah, probably max. I probably burned 70, 72 coming up here. And, uh, as I get weight off, you know, I'll pull it back. I'll be burning, probably burning 60 when I get done, when we're light. Your crew's coming up here. What kind of speed you getting in that plane? I was, I was indicating 150, and uh, my true airspeed is pretty close to that. So, yeah, I've had a little bit of a tailwind, so probably did 160 all the way up here and I'm spraying it uh, shoot for 140 or below you know you don't want to you really want to control speed when you're spraying so so you say so you're spraying 130 140 now do you got a, a auto cal in there that 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 automatically adjusts for different your speeds if you're not exactly right I do yeah we got a flow control so the flow control is set up and uh, it measures uh, GPS it measures ground speed and then it adjusts, it has a, a adjustable valve, it adjusts like five times per second, and it's always keeping that rate dialed in, so whatever my ground speed is, the, the airplane, the space is making it work. And I've already told everybody we're, we're spraying, uh, what, what we're spraying, but why don't you tell everybody what, they're, what we're spraying? Yeah, we're spraying Sendero, uh, Corteva product, it's uh, the, specific mesquite herbicide we uh we do a bunch of it it's uh, a good product they make a bunch of stuff uh we we do use a bunch of their product on weeds as well uh broadleaf weeds Traffic, so 11 o'clock uh, cactus Same we spray a lot of uh, cord on cactus grays on necks on broadleaf weeds duracore is a new product uh it's fairly new it's been out in four or five years and uh it's a non 24D product, so we, we can use it a lot in the summertime where we wouldn't normally use a 24D product. It's, uh, it's, it's really good. So yeah, they've got a, they've got a lot of different, uh, well, they've got a big portfolio range of passion. Uh, I'm sure they appreciate you advertising for them. How does the smoke work? It's a paraffin oil. I've got a tank in the airplane, it's probably five gallons, and it just has a little pump that injects the, the smoke into the exhaust. So the seven eight hundred degree exhaust just vaporizes that oil and uh, makes smoke. Pilot wise, I, I guess you got the other three planes out flying Traffic, somewhere else. Traffic two right o'clock, low, less than one mile. They are, yeah. We uh, everybody had a plan this morning, and uh, they went three different. We went four different directions. All uh, well, three three planes are working on uh, the heat, and one plane on crops this morning. Like I say, if you're done spraying here with me and you gotta go spray something else, you gotta clean your tanks out. What do you do and how do you clean your tanks out and what do you do with your clean out? We don't clean out unless we're switching crops. So, you know, spraying the heat all day, I'm, I'm good all day. 
all week, you know, Traffic, all month. So we switch the chemicals. Same but altitude, when we switch chemicals, we use uh, just a tank cleaner product. It's ammonia based and it just uh, neutralizes the chemical. And then we use the rinse water. Actually, we uh, we use it to spray around uh, the, uh, the the runways in the airport. We reuse it because we've got to do weed control, you know, around the airport. So uh, we reuse it. We'll also put it back in the, we'll catch it and put it back in the airplane. You know, next time we switch to that chemical, we'll have it stored and just put it back and reuse it. So how long is it going to be before I start seeing dead mesquite? So you'll start seeing them turning probably in two days. And they'll just, they'll just get, you know, more brown every day. So, uh, and in, in 10 days, they'll be completely browned out. And uh, probably in two weeks, they'll be, you know, that they'll quit changing visually after two weeks and they'll just be, you know, brown and just start to foliate. Does it burn the grass much? Not much. Um, it can a little bit if the grass is really green. Um, but it's got to be really lush to, before you see it show up in the grass. So you're saying my grass isn't lush? <laughs> it's a lot better than ours. <laughs> We can turn in cattle on this instantly. We don't have to pull off for any reason. Right, we've got a grazing label, so the only restriction is um, there's some restrictions around, uh, you know, sending them to a feedlot, but uh, and dairy cattle, but just standard uh, cow calf. You know, if the if the calf's not going to feed immediately, you're good. And uh, traffic, if, same if altitude, going to feed, less than one mile. Wanna, you know, stand them up in a pen for. Uh, couple days and let them clean out. Let the, uh, I don't want the manure going to a feed yard. Oh, I got you. What's your, are you trying to stay below, you know, 15 feet or 20 feet? What's your, what's your goal there? So, I'd say uh, I'm shooting for 10 feet above the canopy, 8 to 10 feet above the mesquite. And, uh, in rough country, you know, sometimes you get plus or minus as the, as the country changes, but that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm shooting for. Does that thing handle pretty sweet? I mean, is it like a really nice ride? Yeah, it's like the airplane of all airplanes. Yeah, you can real good visibility, and you know they're just built. They're just built for this. And they handle really well. Tons of power. Yeah, I was telling Bonnie this morning. I said, yeah, I'd be. Get, I need to be getting up at three o'clock in the morning, getting my workout done, and being horseback this time of day because. In about another hour, it's going to be 100 degrees. It's going to suck. Yeah, it goes from wonderful to suck in about five minutes. <laughs> wonderful to suck in five minutes. That sounds like a good t-shirt. You don't want to get down in a in a deal like this either. In, if, if the air's rough, it's a no-go, and if it's if you're heavy, it's a no-go. What about when you're fighting fire? The same. Except fighting fire, we don't do anything. We don't, we don't, we drop above the highest point in our path. So, so dropping down in a, in a low area like that, doing fire is not allowed because if the gate failed and you didn't get that load off, then you couldn't, you couldn't recover, couldn't climb out. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a bucket get dropped from when the bucket doesn't open. Traffic, high, less than one mile. And we've got e-dump systems on the fire planes, but you don't, don't trust them. So, you're spraying, um, you know, mesquite, what's everybody else spraying today? Everybody's on mesquite. Three, three airplanes are on mesquite, and then two are on, uh, or one's on uh, cotton. Or actually peanuts this morning. We're spraying some worms on peanuts. The old fellow that taught me how to fly passed away two days ago. Bad day. He taught, I bet he taught, I bet he taught 30 people to fly that I know, and he probably taught a thousand people Traffic. all, all Hi. together. Less than one mile. Oh man, was he was he pretty old? I guess. No, but he got he just can't he got the esophageal cancer. And he just did catch it. He got snuck up on him. That's the best looking mosquito I've seen in a long time. Same here, and I hadn't found a bad one yet. Ever ever from one end of this thing to the other, they all look good. Yeah, we ought to get a dang good kill on these things. So we're looking at what we're talking about. We're looking at this mosquito, and you look at. The, the the canopy of the mesquite, if it's been getting e eaten up with bugs, traffic. we want the chemical to get stuck on the leaves. So if there's no leaves there, the chemical is going, not going to get stuck on there. 
So we want it to be have a really good year, lots of beans, lots of lots of leaf. So if you can see through the bushes, then that's not a good thing. So like say, all right, look at that bush right there with all the beans right out the door. See, you can't see through it. It's a it's a full canopy. That's what we want. That's that's what we want. Now if you get these other ones, like oh here's a here's kind of a scrubby one, you can kind of see through see how you see through that canopy. That's just not a healthy plant and the chemical won't work as good on them. So you want to be have a really thick canopy if you can. July is kind of the time for that, but if but if you gotta have a if you got a big if you're having a dry year or you're having a high insect like you know, like grasshoppers. High. Less than one or, mile. Or you know, eating the crap out of your grass and your and your mesquite trees, you don't wanna waste the money. You probably don't spray much alfalfa down your part of the world, do you? We'll spray uh, usually a few thousand acres for weevils in the spring, but yeah, after that, pretty much no. A little bit of Roundup on Roundup Ready alfalfa. Yeah, we, we spray the weevils on the alfalfa, and then it's first week of April every year. And then I've got my last stand of Roundup Ready alfalfa I'll ever own. It's done. My weeds are Roundup Ready now. Yeah, all of them are. One of my airplanes is going to Iowa uh, next week, so so he'll be up there probably two weeks and uh, helping helping a friend of ours up there. A lot of airplanes go up there and spray corn this time of year. Yeah, you sure see everybody's like this time of year. Everybody's going to Iowa. Helicopters, planes, everybody. Yeah, lots of helicopters Traffic, as well. Same altitude, less than one mile. We normally don't go, but um, as hot dry as it is here with the crop in the shape of can, we're gonna go and go ahead and go. Man, I wish we had something that killed them cedar trees. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> maybe somebody's working on that. Yeah, maybe somebody is. Wish I knew who it was. Yeah, those guys are gonna be rich. R44s are gonna turn into R4407. Traffic, three o'clock, same altitude, less than one mile. I just need to get me a couple little skinny girls in here to shoot my chemical balls to kill all these cedar trees, so we go start killing cedar trees. That's right. Yeah, I'll be up here with my helicopter. I like a challenge, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a challenge doing a job like this, a little bit of a, Set up, pay attention. Well, you're the only one I get to show up. <laughs> yeah, you had to take what you could get. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, well, I thought I was going to have to spray it myself. That's why I bought my own spray rig, and then I finally figured out, surely, it's got to be somebody to spray this thing. Traffic. Yeah, you you probably blocked my number now that we got this sprayed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be done. We're no longer friends. I'll unfriend you. Yeah, I'll be expecting that when I land. <laughs> He's built a hell of a company. I mean, he built it. He started with nothing, and hell of a business. But if you're around him very long, you know how smart he is. He's a smart dude. He's not your. I'm not saying that crop dusters are dumb, but. He's not your average crop duster guy. Uh, I think this is gonna be the last pass. I'm gonna run out on this one. All right, we'll get it. We'll get you spitting and sputtering then. When I get done, I'll send you my log file, and it'll be a GPS uh, overlay of what we did on Google Earth. It'll be pretty neat to look at. Yeah, I lost pressure on that one, so I shut her off. I don't want any half dead to keep. Yeah, that looks good. Well, we appreciate it, Luke, and. Um, we will be talking to you. All right. Y'all have a good morning. Enjoyed it. All right. See you. Thank you. You bet. See y'all. Well, all right. Well, we're coming into headquarters here, so I guess that's a wrap for killing mesquites. Um, we do have some products that kill cedar trees, and y'all be hearing more about that soon. But that was Sundero made by Corteva that we were spreading on mesquite and we will let you know how it goes. I bet it turns out good. Alright, see y'all next week.